years. Okay, welcome back to part two of my MFP multifunction panel that I am in the process of constructing. I've made some changes since uh, the last recording and specifically I've added these two additional banana jacks up here, a speaker out and a speaker in. And I know typically that blue should not probably be used for the speaker in but I kind of like the looks of the blue. I used it down here as well for the cap. And I decided I didn't want to have three red ones up here, so I went to blue. I like it. I think it'll look good. I'm going to have labels on all this stuff anyway. But um, the reason I did that, and it's not even on my latest and greatest version of this, um, but it is on something else. But let me show you what I've got here right now. So I mentioned in part one that I had decided I was going to add a dummy load to this panel. And mainly I did that because you know you guys have probably gotten sick, especially on that uh, Victor 1929 when I was showing you the adjustment on that of it screaming at you. And uh, I probably should have had my camera different too, but that was annoying to me as far as the screaming. So I decided to put a dummy load in here. What I've done is this was the previous iterations, right? I had this one where I had the electronic circuit breaker over here on this side and then I changed it up moved my electrical outlet down some on this one and moved my electronic circuit breaker over here. Well now I've got a new version and this is it. On this one it's showing and reflecting the fact that I've got my Variac down low on the corner now versus in the middle, the voltmeter and the amp above it, the uh, frequency counter right here, the AC volt for the AC portion above the outlet and I slid the outlet over. Yes I talked about this slot being probably where I was going to put it but I changed my mind on that after this layout. So I've now moved the electronic circuit breaker back over to this side rearranged it a little bit where I've got my switches for it here my indicator lights here for the trip and the on and then the reset button and the cycle time uh, switch here I moved the component tester from up here back down here and now over on this side this is where I've got my speaker load the speaker on and off for the load it's either going to be on going through the load or off uh, going to the speaker and if it's going to the load, I'm building in a, a 4 ohm, uh, an 8 ohm, and a 16 ohm value so that I can run those size speakers. And then over here is where I added the speaker out. Now since that time, I've created uh, my schematic for this, which is right here. So looking at the radio here. For me to use this, I, I need to disconnect the radio output to the positive of the actual speaker. And so I will have a, as it's shown down here, I will have a banana jack lead with an alligator clip, another one for the common, and then uh, a dual input for this one, number two, which is going to serve two purposes. So it will supply the speaker out when I'm not using the dummy load. It will just simply go from the radio output into the radio in jack and then to the on off on dummy load switch which depending upon how it's thrown will either go to the dummy load or will just go straight back to the speaker. The reason I've got this cord right here actually has two banana jacks and one of them will go into the speaker out port over here and the other side will go to either my 50, my 10 or my 2 volt my DB meter basically so we can the DB meter is basically in parallel, it's not in series with it, it's in parallel so that I can read the meter 
and so my speaker out is powered it up I still can read my meter that's the whole purpose of that then if I'm going through my dummy load I've got a 4 ohm 100 watt resistor here an 8 ohm 100 watt resistor here and two 8 ohm 100 watt resistors here the 4 is just going straight to the 4 the 8 position is going straight to the 8 and the 16 is going through the 8 in series and this is a 3 position on 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 switch so when I turn it on it'll be automatically in the 8 ohm position and then I can switch it either to the 4 or the 16 and that's how I've got this plan to do this so this is going to be the dummy load so when it all works out that's going to be the plan so that in mind again looking back at this radio in right here that's that's the blue plug right here and then speaker out right here will be this terminal here and then of course these over here are as we have over here I've actually got them, I just noticed I've got them listed in reverse order here than what I did up here. This is the 5010, the 2, and I've got a 21050, but irrelevant. But that's what I got, so that's what I've done since uh, last I spoke. So, besides rearranging this and getting the plugs in there, I am uh, going to be drilling my two holes for the dummy load and for the ohm value switch which will both go approximately right here Okay, there's those two holes. Now, if you notice, I only went that big in that one. That's because I don't have the actual on, on, on switch yet. Uh, I ordered it, and it's supposed to be here in a couple of days. And when I looked on the site where I ordered it, it did not give me a dimension for it. And I don't want to make it too big to start with. So I made it for the one that I have the switch for. And I'm going to have to wait for that one. Alright, so this is the last layout that I did. And I changed it again. So, here we are with the Variac down here in the corner. This is the same one we had. But, I've been laying things out and I've come up with a different plan. And this is going to change a little bit. Not dramatically, just a little bit. So let me show you what I got. Here is the current layout for the left hand side of the board. When you look at this, right where the green starts would be where the DMM is at. So, let me bring it a little closer for you. So this rectangular square here is the component tester. So we moved it up. So where it was, but we moved it up. This right here is the outlet. It's going to be a single round outlet. This is the frequency counter. This is the big AC uh, voltmeter amp meter. This is the DC voltage. This is the DC amperage. This is a hole that was holding the variac bracket in place. This is the hole that was holding the variac bracket in place. I'm getting rid of this hole. Between this hole and this hole, I think we're plenty strong. I'm putting the panel I'm printing out is going to go under the variac and the bezel for the variac. And so this is all bezel. Stops right here. I got a notch right here. And this notch is where I'm going to have 
the switches for the circuit breaker, the electronic circuit breaker. And up in this area is where I will have my indicator lights and probably the rotating cycle switch. I may put the cycle switch down here too. I may just leave the plastic area for the indicator lights and the reset button and then put the switches all down here in the metal away from the plastic. I want to be able to label these and so I want to have the metal exposed where I want to put the labels. So this is the plan. Now I just got to go draw it up on Tinkercad and print it out. And I guess I will do that and we'll come back. Alrighty, so like I showed you a little bit ago, this was what I put together with all my dimensions on it <clears throat> and I printed it and this is the result of the print. Now I'm not real happy with the finish because I usually the top side sometimes the, the, the printer will rake it and make it not so pretty. I usually like to use the bottom side. Well this was the bottom side and I'm not real happy with it. In this case the top side turned out really nice. But that turns out to be the bottom side so I'm going to have to reprint it. But it's good enough for me to check my dimensions on. So we set it on here. I made it so that it would be even with this one and line up with my hole for the variac and the mounting screw for the variac and those those line up perfect. So really all I gotta do is make sure that my actual components fit in it. I may have to adjust the holes a little bit if the components don't quite fit. A lot of times when you print if you make it the same size as what the component is it squishes together and makes it a little tight so I may have to open the holes up slightly but I wanted to try it first and once I know what I've got I'll reprint it so that the clean side is on the top versus this one that looks kind of I mean it's smooth it's just the pattern looks kind of funky and I don't like that because on the other side the, the pattern is pretty freaking smooth all over the place I mean yeah there's a couple of line looking things but all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So, and this is actually different material than what this was, but they're pretty darn close in color too. So, I'm real happy with that. So, once I get these dimensions figured out, if everything's um, the right size, then my next step is going to be I'm going to take marker and cut out the areas that need to be cut out still, which is here for the outlet, this part this part, this part, this does not get cut out, and then this part, and then it'll be ready to, to put the parts in there. So I'm going to try a trial fit my pieces and we'll see what we get. Alright, so the good news is everything freaking fit perfect like a glove, man. These are nice and perfectly even. You can see I got the Variac back in place. I got the screw for the bracket back in place. All I got to do now is go back and drill the holes for these mounting screws and I'm going to mark these openings with a marker and then I will cut those out with my nibbler my air nibbler so I'm getting ready to mark these right now I'm marking these but they're going to basically be oversized slightly from what I've got here Like I said, I'm trying to conserve as much metal as I can in this just to keep things rigid. And this gives me my outline is where I, I know I, the minimum that I have to, to work with here. Oop, I'm glad I'm not using this one, huh? Just did a booger there. back off, finish making these holes, and uh, all I have to do is print out the new one. I don't have to make any modifications to any of the, whole, uh, the holes in the new one I'm getting ready to print out. The only reason I'm printing it out is because I'm not happy with the face on this right now, the pattern on it. So I'm going to print a new one out and hopefully it will come out looking a little bit better. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. So, 
let me get the other one printed out I'll cut these out and uh, we'll come back okay so that pretty much completes the cutouts they're not the cleanest in the world but I think they're going to work work just fine I think so if we put this over and get the holes lined up where it belongs I think that we're in pretty good shape I think we're in actually very good shape it's pretty much it right there and the only one I may have a little bit of problem with is this one right here in the corner I don't have much metal left there I might have to go ahead and take that out and uh, go ahead and put the screw in there to just put it with the washer but that's the only one that's uh, a little close everything else is pretty darn good so I got some good here. I just got to get the final version of this made, the one that's cleaner on the top. Uh, I'll bring it back when we get that done. Okay, so here is the final layout of the components on the MFP. I went ahead and I made the second bezel. Like I said, I was gonna. Like I said, this one was better on the side that I put down versus the side that goes up. So I printed out a new one. And that's what's on there. So, as it's laid out here, so this is the Variac. DC, AC, DC Variac. I actually had some knobs that I had bought on eBay a year or so ago, and that actually fit perfect. And it actually works well with that voltage bezel that came with the Variac. And the funny thing about that uh, bezel was I thought that it was kind of nastied up, and I was going to have to try and play with it while... It had a plastic film on it that I didn't know was there that had been on there since it apparently was new and nobody ever pulled it off. I pulled it off and it's brand new. So that worked out well. So the DC voltage 0 to 1000 uh, volts is blue. This particular, this is a volt amp meter. This is not what belongs in here. This is actually kind of a placeholder. The, I have one on order that's also blue. That will be just amps and so it'll kind of match the bolt but it'll be in blue I'm supposed to have that sometime end of this week but the body size was supposed to be the same size so I went ahead and used this one just to get everything sized up properly when the new one comes in I'll pop that this one out and put the new one in this is the uh, AC volt amp kilowatt meter here and of course here's my plug I, I put a single plug in it I would have liked to have been able to gone vertical with it, but because of the component tester, I can't do that. Um, I probably could have moved it over, but I decided I wanted it there. And so, and then here's my frequency counter up here. I don't have the correct screws right now for it. I just used a couple of these standoffs that came with it just to hold it up and make sure everything lined up the way it was supposed to, and it did. So it'll actually have four screws in it when it's done. And I'm probably, I don't know that I'm going to put a, these, this, these light up blue as well. So I may put, um, I don't know, a, a, a light film over that. I had some of that uh, not so dark film that I used on the 29 Victor dial bezel. I may put some of that over there just to protect it. But that's pretty much the way it's going to stay. And then the component tester here, that's in. And, uh, so that'll have its own leads coming down out of that and of course the, the DMM so what I've got left to do is the electronic circuit breaker that is going to be uh, of course it'll be inside there you won't really see any of the workings of it but it will have um, the cycle knob that determines how quickly that the electronic circuit breaker trips based on the current draw and so that'll be right here I believe and then um, there's another switch or two that I'm planning on putting on here too and then we have the trip light the on light and the reset button and I believe those I'm going to put if I don't put them in the same space with this in this area I'll put the lights up here I think they'll look better with the, the lights and the reset up here so once I get that built I'll know better how, how I want to put it in here, but that's the reserve space for it. So 
I basically, well you saw the, the, the cuts, so I left enough metal in here that I feel real happy with the uh, amount of reinforcement in there. Once everything has been finalized and the holes drilled, uh, I will pull this back apart, clean it up, take it outside and paint it, and then put it back together again. So, over here, I was working on my dummy load, and unfortunately, the on, on, on switches that I ordered that were going to be uh, to switch from 4, 8, and 16 ohms arrived, and they arrived wrong. And now that they've arrived in the wrong, I'm, I'm like, I don't really want to even mess with trying to reorder more. I get them from DigiKey, but they, they're really teeny tiny. I'm not real happy with how teeny tiny they are. That's why this hole is as small as it is, <coughs> was because it was a smaller switch. I think what I'm going to do, I've got some big um, on, off, on switches coming in, and I'm thinking that I'm going to use two of those use one of them to do like the four and the eight and then use the other one to do the 16 ohm for the dummy load and I probably won't on that one I probably won't use the on off on I'll probably just use an off on for that so I'll probably wind up with three switches a big one here a big one here those will be like the four eight and 16 and I'll probably put the actual dummy slash speaker switch below it here or maybe even above it here I don't know I, I haven't figured that out yet but that's where we're at right now I'm pretty happy with the way it's shaping up I'm getting the components all located and all installed and then after that I have to build my bottom and I have to um, put the additional wiring and components and transformers and such like that inside that. Now what I've been thinking about doing is I've got room enough behind this I could actually extend this out and I'm actually thinking that instead of this back portion being the rear of this I'm thinking I might bring it out a couple of inches maybe three inches and give myself more real estate to do the work that's going to be going on inside there to house everything. Um, I'll figure that out as I go. But if I do that, I'll make that out of wood, but I'm going to spray it the same color as the rest of whatever the metal gets painted. Uh, I'll, I'll paint that the same. I've done that on another project and it actually worked pretty good. I, I'm going to use uh, some silver metallic uh, spatter paint and it does a pretty good job. So this is what I got done right now, and since the last time you saw it, what I have added is the switches for the speaker slash dummy load. I haven't got these labeled yet, but I will get them labeled. This is going to be the switch that right now everything's off. If I was going to uh, put it on load, the dummy load, this switch would go up, which then makes this switch and this switch available to operate. This one would be... 4 ohm down or 8 ohm up and this one would be 16 ohm up and nothing down nothing connected to that I also got it somewhat wired up I'll share how much you're seeing of this let's see yeah so these are the three switches right yeah right here these are the three switches here's the wires going over to these inputs and outputs for the speaker out, speaker in, and the meter for reading it. Okay, so the way that this would work, and theoretically in my brain anyway, is I've got, disregard the black color because this won't be a black wire. I've got the radio on the radio. I've got the speaker positive disconnected from the speaker, the wire that's going to it from say the, the output transformer, okay? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to connect the lead from the speaker in to that wire from the output transformer. I'm going to connect the speaker out to the positive on the speaker along with a third wire which is this wire that will de determine how my meter reads either in the 50 volt scale, the 10 volt scale, the 2 volt scale. 
and this will also go onto the uh, speaker terminal. But the plan is that this would, this, uh, as I showed you, I think originally on this paper here, I'll be making a lead number two, which is these two that I'm just showing you right here, be these two, and this lead will be long enough on one of these so that it'll reach. It can this one will be here, and the other one can reach. You know, either of those three shouldn't take much of extra length to do that. But then that would go to the positive, the speaker. So then if I wanted to go to the load, then I can flip that up and depending upon the ohmage of the speaker I'm testing, whether it's 4, 8, or 16, I can flip this up, flip down, flip this up, and that's the way it'll read. And I have the dummy load connected to the 10 volt scale so it'll always be on the 10 volt scale that's the way that's going to work so hopefully it's going to work out that's what i've got done right now now so i've got to get my base figured out so i can actually start locating the other components that intertwine with all this all the electric so i gotta get that figured out okay so here's an overall view of what it looks like right at the moment i got my uh, newest meter in for the DC. This will be the amp. Um, it looks like it's white numbers, but when they light up, they'll actually be blue, so they'll kind of match this one here. And of course, I've got the uh, frequency counter in place. I've got uh, a little plastic cover over that. I may change that out, make it like solid plexiglass. Still have to drill my holes and put my screws in for my uh, outlet there. I got my switches all in place. What I'm getting ready to do right now, or what you can see I've done so far, is I've cut a piece of wood that is now screwed to, and I will turn this around here and let you see it. It's all screwed down. And I made it bigger. I'll measure it. Yeah, three inches. I made it three inches deeper. And my plan is that I, once I get everything built in here, this gives me more depth. I've actually got enough room to go all the way back on my bench and still have plenty of room in front of it. So I decided I would rather have more depth and have more room to put the stuff than to have everything all crammed, cramped up in there. So now I can have more room to actually work and get the rest of my uh, wiring and electrical components inside here, uh, transformers, etc. What I'm getting ready to do is get this transform mounted. I've taped up everything I don't need in it. I left the primaries and the secondaries available. And where I'm thinking about putting this is like right here. And then I can put the filter condenser box behind it is what I'm thinking. And that'll keep everything kind of right here in this location. And when I bring my pieces of wood out, I'll bring this on out like that and down on the sides. And it completely box that in. So what I'm getting ready to do is make a bracket for that. So I decided, I found this piece of metal. It basically is exactly the right height for this. I just have to make a, a notch for the wiring and I'm just gonna cut it off on the bottom. I'll have some mounting holes for that. I'll drill a couple mounting holes for the flanges of the transformer and I'll determine exactly where I wanna mount it. But I think that's kinda where I'm gonna mount it. So I think that's what I'm going to do right now is cut this bracket and we'll come back. Okay, I got that bracket made. Now this is an aluminum bracket. So let's go ahead and fit this thing on here. Wires through that hole, hopefully. Get these wires started through the hole. There we go. Perfect. And in keeping with my wing nut theme, we'll Stick some of these wing nuts in here, hopefully. Get my fat finger out of the way. Get it started. Works um, a little better in this application.
yeah that should work good now depending upon where I want to set it as far over as I can get it and keep it within the confines so in order to have a piece come down the back here probably somewhere like that but I've still got a few inches in there between it and the back about four inches and I've got plenty of room for my filter capacitor can or housing that I'm going to make I'll print off and uh, so that'll all be contained right in this area and that gives me plenty of area for the electronic circuit breaker and things such as that the other transformers and some other transformers I'm going to be putting in here along with some buck converters to get my voltages dropped down so next up will be to get this in place and, and mounted <coughs> This is probably a good spot to uh, stop this particular video for part two of the multifunction panel. <coughs> so I think in uh, part three we're going to get even hot and heavier at uh, getting this all wired up, uh, getting my switch panels down low made, getting my um, signal tracer installed, things such as that. So, so I, I've left myself plenty of room to be able to work in here as well as for room for expansion later if I need to add something in here that maybe takes a bulk more of a bulk component I'll still have plenty of room in here to do that with I think it's pretty good shape so that'll wrap up part two of the multi-purpose panel stay tuned for part three I thank you for watching Greg's vintage workshop where I'm working to restore history one piece at a time as well as apparently building some shop equipment thanks for watching